Hello. <laughs> it's Wednesday night, it's nine o'clock, and it's time for Food Addiction Fair and Firm. I am Dr. Connie Stapleton, and I am coming to you live tonight from, hi Marta, <laughs> from my son's house. It's a little bit dark in here. Hi, friends. Um, so, tonight, I am not exactly sure what we're going to talk about, but I was thinking that maybe you guys could help me because we're talking about food addiction here, right? So if you're participating or watching, you're probably um, active in food addiction or recovering from food addiction or know somebody who is struggling with food addiction. And so I'm wondering tonight what you guys think about how do you address somebody, how do you talk to somebody that you love or care about or you're worried about because of their addiction, about their addiction. So, because, and let me tell you why I wanna talk about this. Because I think that there's really no right way. There probably are some not so right ways or wrong ways or unhealthy ways or ways that aren't gonna get you anywhere, but, when you're talking to somebody who's in active addiction or, you know, let's say, let's talk about food addiction. Let's say they're either anorexic and they're a food addict or they're uh, obese and they're a food addict or whatever the case may be. How do you talk to people? What, first of all, maybe we can say, what are some things that how people address you about their concerns for you about your weight. Tell me some things that you did not appreciate. Yates, I agree. Honest, firm, and direct, but loving, which absolutely is the way to do it. But when you're on the receiving end, does it really matter? <laughs> it is really hard. Let's say that somebody, what are some things people said to you or how they tried to approach you about their concerns about you regarding your weight that may have been healthy or may have been helpful or may have not been helpful? Because what I'm thinking is, what I'm thinking is that when somebody's active in their addiction, it doesn't matter how you approach it. How willing are people to hear it? So somebody type out the most appropriate, kind, loving, direct, respectful thing you might. Oh, Tiffany, I love that. Listen to this. Tiffany said, the worst may have been saying nothing. God love you, woman. I so agree. I so agree. Not saying anything. What message does that send? Well, what do you think? You see, you need to lose weight. You have such a beautiful face. I'm sure most of you have heard that, right? And most people are not willing at all to hear it. So what are you supposed to do? But first of all, let's talk about, I really, want, I really want to hear what you have to say that Tiffany just mentioned. The worst may have been not saying anything at all. Okay, Nancy says, here's a good one. All right, here's a very good, kind way to say this. I love you, and I am concerned for your health and your life. It couldn't be put more lovingly, kindly, directly than that, right? So how many of you have had that said to you. How many of you have had somebody in your life either say something along the lines of, I love you and I'm concerned about your health and your life? Very many of you. Hey, Angie. Um, I heard that so many times, Amy. Amy, Amy, I've had that about the pretty face. Is that what you guys are talking about? Um, what happened, you gained the weight back has been said to me. That's not fun, right? Okay, so Dawn says, 
I've had people say that to me. Anybody else? Hi, Suze Man again. Yes, people have had that say to them, oh, that has happened to me. How did you take it? How did you feel? How did you interpret it? How did you absorb or not that information? I love you. I care about you. I'm so worried about your health. I'm so worried about your life. How do you take that when you're the person in active addiction? I was told to mind my own business and stay out of her lane. So I never said anything else about it again. Um, I have had people say to me, my surgery did not work. I felt upset and a little bit angry. Of course, when we hear something that may be true and we may know it's true and it hurts, right? We don't want to hear it. You get upset. You get defensive. What, what about in the situation that Tiffany mentioned, nobody says anything. I felt bad, kind of made me mad. Absolutely embarrassing. Absolutely hurts your feeling. Absolutely. So the point on this one is there ain't no easy way to do this, which has already been said. Because no matter how loving, how kind, how gentle, how affirming, how reassuring you are to somebody that they matter and you love them and you care and all that stuff, it's going to hurt them. And when we're hurt, we get defensive and we deflect and we minimize and we say, you know, we get mad at you, the messenger. You know what? How much do you love that person? How much did people love you? Did they love you enough to say that? It didn't sink in until act, uh, hubby actually said almost those exact words with emotion and tears. Then I actually listened. What a good man. Well, I don't know if he's a good man, but I'm, su <laughs> I'm suspecting he's a good man. But what a loving, beautiful thing for him to have done. And good for you for listening. I was upset before surgery. Now people are saying, saying it that I've lost too much. And this time I'm telling them thank you. But I'm healthy and I'm under beautiful answer, Angie. I'm healthy and I'm under doctor's care. I'm healthy. You know what? When people are, here's just a little sidebar. When people give you feedback, whether it's right, wrong, fits, is way out in left field, doesn't matter. Here's a really great response. So you don't sound defensive or you don't sound like you're dismissing them or you don't sound like you're not going to consider it. To just say, thank you for the feedback. I'll give that some thought. That's a beautiful, beautiful comment when anybody gives you feedback because you might feel immediately defensive, and I get that, right? We all know what that feels like for somebody to tell us something about ourselves that we don't want to hear, and it's not fun. So to always just come back with, um, thank you for the feedback. I'll give that some thought. That engages them, right? Okay. For those of us, like Tiffany and myself, where no one said anything, what was that like? What message does that send? What message do you get from that? So even those of you who have had somebody say that they care about you, um, good for you, Angie. At first I was defensive, but now I say the letter. Yep. Um, for those of you who nobody said anything, they didn't say, I'm worried about your weight, I'm worried about your health, I'm worried about what, how this is affecting your life, I'm worried about how this is affecting my life, anything. What was that like? What was that like? They don't care. I think that would be worse. You know what? I'm going to tell you, I was that person. I was the one where nobody said anything. I was 89 pounds, 19 years old. Yeah, elephants in the room. Absolutely nobody cares. That's exactly how I felt. Nobody gave a shit. When I forgot to share this in my last, um, I was doing some thinking this weekend. And one time, <laughs> 
One time I found some pictures in my dad's attic. No one said anything, even the doctor, right? Does that not tick you off? It ticks me off. I found some pictures in my dad's attic and I was like 30 years old. And I, I took him downstairs and I said to my dad, who is this man? There's all these pictures of this man and I've never seen this man before. Who is this? And my father says to me, it's my dad. It's your dad? I'm 30 years old. Why have I never seen a picture of your father? And they've been up here in the attic all this time. You know what my dad's response was? And it broke my heart for him. His response was, who would have given a shit? Because I think that's how my dad felt about himself. Nobody really gives a shit. I'm not important enough to give a shit about. And I made the biggest connection because when I went off to college, I felt so alienated, like Lisa Marie is saying, right? I felt like nobody gives a shit. I'm gone from home for the first time ever. There are seven people still living in that house. I heard from no one. And I thought I could be dead for weeks and no one would know it. And that was the feeling I had, who gives a shit? And then I lose all this weight for control reasons and addiction reasons and all this other stuff. Nobody said anything. Nobody said anything. How could I interpret anything other than nobody gives a shit? I don't matter. Now, I don't know if that's what it really meant, but that was my interpretation. And how could it not be yours? If people see you dying or getting closer and closer and closer to death because your health is giving out because of your weight, and they can clearly see that there's a food addiction, perhaps, and nobody says anything, so sad right so sad and i think all of us have experienced intense loneliness and isolation dolly says i isolate you sure do woman <laughs> i'm going to agree with you on that um and there's a time and a place right there's a time and a place we need to say i need to be alone i need some processing time i need to shut the world out but if that's what you're doing all the time that's not healthy and Dolly you don't do that all the time I know you don't because I see you out there I see you out there connecting with people um, but loneliness hurts right there's a song oh my god I'm going to encourage you I'm going to type this out and I'm going to encourage you as soon as we get off of this live to go listen to this song and have a whole box of Kleenex with you. I'm just saying. The song is called, I Love You This Much. And it's by my favorite, my favorite singer in the whole world, Colin Ray. Anybody know that song? All my childhood life processing time exactly yes um, has anybody ever heard the song I love you this much by Colin Ray anybody anybody I encourage you to go listen to it okay so let's go back to does anybody know people who are currently suffering from addiction of any kind or who you see killing themselves with food. I love Colin Ray too. Um, if you know somebody that you see suffering, I think I've been crying all day, but at least let some out. That's awesome, Amy. I am just loving that. I mean, I'm not loving that you're crying all day. 
but I'm loving that you're giving yourself permission to cry because healing from addiction requires few tears, right? Sometimes bucketfuls of tears. Okay, so people know, <laughs> listen to 80s music, it's the best. No, 70s. All right, yes to both. I think in a world trying to accept all body types, people don't want to say anything about weight. That's a really good point. That is a really, really, really good point. Um, had, oh my gosh, Dolly, you did. That's right. Had a niece die of addiction a month ago, 43. So, so, so sad. Okay, so that's a good point. And I'm glad you brought that up, Mary, because we have to be super, super sensitive, right? Um, but I would encourage you, if it's a person that you're really, really close to, because I agree, we can't go around telling you know, half the world, I'm worried about your weight. But if it's a if it's a someone you love, a good good friend or a family member or somebody you're really close to, and you see that their health is in danger, seriously, or you see that their quality of life is in danger, how much do you love that person? You know, if somebody says it's none of your business, stay in your own lane, butt out of my life, that's a tough one. But it depends how close you are to that person, right? Like if it was one of my children, I might say, listen, I hear you telling me you don't want me involved. But I love you too much not to be involved. And I will always speak my concerns. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to heed anything I say. But I love you enough to let you know that it scares me. No, obviously, I'm not going to say that every second I'm around the person because, right, then they're going to run away. Mary, I have to talk to my daughter. It is hard. It is hard. Dolly, I'm the biggest person I know. You know what, Dolly? <laughs> I just love you. You just crack me up a lot of times. You go look in the mirror and say, I love you this much. I love you this much. I love you too much to let you do this. I don't care if you believe it. So don't come at me with that. I don't believe that. Do it. I love you this much. And especially when we're talking about our kids, right? Because would we not lay our life down for them? I think most of us would. But we're afraid to say, I'm concerned about you. Right? And I know it's hard and I know it's scary. Well, my daughter's 300 pounds and I heard her panting over the phone. With all the deaths we've had in the last week, that makes me so sad. Good girl, good girl, Dolly. That is so, so sad, Mary. I love you this much, you tell her. I love you this much. I've had that conversation with one of my best friends. You know? I love you this much. I love you enough to say this to you. And I've said it to you before, but I love you enough. I'm going to say it to you again. And she has said the same thing to me, not about my weight, but about how I stay so busy. She's like, listen, I love you. I'm worried about you. You know, you struggle with your blood pressure. I want you around. I hope you'll slow down. She loves me that much. That's a good feeling, right? That's a good feeling. You'd lay down your heart, your life in a heartbeat. Absolutely. I try almost on a weekly basis to talk to my 18-year-old. I've convinced him to give up soda for 30 days. That's awesome. Are you kidding? That's huge. That's not a step in the right direction. That's a leap, man. That is so cool. I feel like I need to set the example for my granddaughter, so I got to get back on track. Good job, Dolly. Good job. You know? And people always say we have to do it for us, and we do, eventually. But sometimes there's an external motivation that gets us started, right? That's how I feel daily. I don't feel the need to, all right, yeah. Okay, at WLS, and I've talked to her about it, but I have to do it again. Good, 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 you know? So maybe this is just the gentle, loving nudge. And if they rebel and get nasty, just say, listen, I love you enough 
for you to be mad at me. I love you enough for you to hang up on me. I love you enough to let you know I will help in any way I can. I love you enough to go through this uncomfortable talk with you. I love you enough for it to be okay for you to distance yourself from me from a while, for a while. Because I'm not going anywhere. I've started this little thing with, uh, yeah, your five-year-old. You know what? I got into treatment because of my kids and my husband. I didn't do it for me. But I'll tell you what, it grew into being for me, <laughs> right? Because at the beginning, you don't love yourself enough. I didn't love myself enough, shit. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't care enough about myself. I didn't matter to me. So it really wasn't who'd given a shit. It was like, I didn't give a shit. Right? So I needed to care. I needed to think I was worth it. I thought my kids were worth my getting into treatment. I thought my husband was worth it. And that was okay. If that's how I had to get started, then that's great. Because now it's not just for them. It's for me. And it's for them. Because if I'm not, if I'm not okay, if I'm not the best me, I'm not the best me for them. Period. End of story. Let's see, I dressed seeing the doctor again. It's okay, Dolly. Come on, girl. You know what? You're not the first one that's put their weight back on, I promise you. But you know what? You might be one of the few who gets it back off, which is way cool. Which is way, 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 way cool. Put it off for a long time. I know, love. That's okay. Um, do you know if the success rate is good for lap band done on people compared to the slave? You know what? I don't know. And what I know is that the success rate is good for people who do what they're supposed to do. Hello. Bottom line, it'll work if you work it, right? Now, I said this to somebody today, and I'm going to say this here. If we had 2,000 people living in a community for a year, and those 2,000 people were fed the exact same food at the exact same time in the exact same amount every single day for a year and those 2,000 people did the exact same exercise for the exact same amount of time for a year. Those 2,000 people would not weigh the same at the end of that year. So the success rate for you depends on what you do. <laughs> It's just that simple. If you if you're if you're a bariatric patient and you eat 60 grams of protein and try to keep your net carbs below 30, and you exercise four or five days a week, you're successful. End of story. I don't care what surgery you have. I had my surgery for my kids and future grandbabies. And yes, now being healthy is for me and for all of us. That is the most joyful thing, right? That's how it works. It's important to take care enough to go to the doctor, Dolly. Amen. That's right. I didn't like myself. I did it to find a man. Now that I have the best man I've ever known. And I love myself to do this for me. That's amazing. Beautiful. Beautiful. Because a lot of times people do stuff to get the man, and then they give up on themselves after they got him. That's no good, so you're doing this for you. And that will keep that relationship healthy too. Still struggling with this. I still don't love myself at times. It's not about all the time every day, Dawn. It's about progress, right? It's about willingness to go to that mirror and say, I don't know if I love you, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. I'm going to look in the mirror and say, I'm supposed to say I love you. <laughs> so there, I love you. And then run away before you catch yourself, right? Um, you'll eventually get there. I don't love everything about myself every single day. Dear God. In fact, half the days I say it's so hard to be me. But it's always an adventure. Um, 
Good, Della. I'm glad you're going in Tuesday. You have to work it. You have to work it. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I love that, Amber. Absolutely. Lap band for 12 years. It works if you work it. It depends on the individual. At the end of every AA meeting, they say it works if you work it. It won't if you don't. Duh. I mean, I hate to be all sarcastic like that, but duh. It works if you work it. And even with an addiction, right? You got to work it, which means you do the things people that have addictions do if they want to recover. It works if you work it. Daughter doesn't feel worthy of doing something for her self-love or self-care. She's stuck in addiction. That's her coping tool of choice. I get that. I get that, Lisa. You know what? And sometimes I say we got to remember that they're pretty young yet. You know, I don't know how old she is, but um, it took time for us to get there too, right? So the best thing that we can do, the best couple of things that I think we can do are A, be the example, acknowledge, you know what? When I look at you, I see myself. When I didn't love myself and didn't care enough about myself, when I didn't want to feel, when I didn't know how to heal, right? So affirming, be affirming and, you know, say, I get it. I understand that was me and just say I know that you'll get to the point right so kind of plant that seed I know you will get to the point where you seek help like I've had to do and I will be there with you when that time comes right all right having a huge time learning how to eat keep throwing up way too much well, I don't know what to tell you about that. <laughs> Other than chew that food, talk to your dietitian. Um, all right. Let's see. We are our own worst enemy. We need to teach ourselves that we are worth it. It's so true. And without that, it's going to be real hard to make any progress. Without putting forth that effort, it works if you work it. And part of the work in it. It has nothing to do with food or chewing or anything. Part of working it has to do with telling ourselves that we are worth it. Having, you know, looking at ourselves in the mirror and saying, you know what? I believe in us. We're going to do this together, right? You, me, and myself. Thank God. All right. Your daughter's 36. Okay. Yeah, she's getting, you know, hopefully she's getting there, right? Oops, I mean we are our own worst enemy. We sure as heck are. Wish people would learn to love themselves at a much younger age. You know what, Dolly? I do too. And there is a way for that to happen. <laughs> it's called healthy parenting. Just saying. And it's not just the parenting. I understand that. But it's about children getting positive messages about themselves. Children don't come into the world with negative self-messages. It doesn't happen. They learn that from kids at school or unhealthy adults or parents or whatever. So it'll happen when we, when we teach children about how amazing they are with discipline, not hitting discipline guidelines, right? Um, Nancy, me too. Thought I was going to die. I'm on blood thinner for heart issues. I ended up with, I, I, I glad you're with us woman. Yes, I'm worth it. My husband and my daughters help me so much. Support is so important. It is, it is, it is, it is. Dolly, you were born this way, which means awesome. We were all born awesome. And until we remind ourselves that we were born awesome, and that means we are awesome, and we can get back to feeling awesome, it's a choice you make. I don't love myself. Guess what? That would be a choice. At this point in your life, my friends, that is a choice. One that you can actively change. It works if you work it. It won't if you don't. Food addiction, fair and firm, right? Am I not fair and firm? She wants to eat all the time and she's so skinny. She's also picking. I don't want her to eat when she's bored. Good. Teach her good, you know, teach her good habits. Give her healthy snacks. Talk to the pediatrician. Um, yeah. Don't give her junk because when we do, 
I mean, of course, you're going to give her some junk. Kids eat some junk, right? But make sure she has a balanced diet. All right. So love yourself. Look in that mirror and say, I'm not going to ignore you. You are too important to ignore. If not for anybody else, for me. So you go, not ignore yourself, love yourself, give yourself good, positive affirmations, and get on with it. All right, guys. Thanks so, so, so much for being here tonight. Um, making the changes you're making slowly but surely or fast and gigantic. I don't know how you're doing it, but it'll work if you work it. All right. And being here, thank yourself. You wouldn't be here if you didn't think you were a little bit worth it. Just saying. All right. See you next time. Good night. My health, my responsibility, this day and every day.